In March, we release our second white. It's a Washington State Riesling Chenin Blanc. Riesling is the queen of white grapes. You can have your Chardonnay, you can keep your Sauvignon Blanc. As far as I'm concerned, Riesling is the queen of all grapes. It produces wines that feature the fruit. They can't be covered up with oak, they can't be massaged. That fruit has to be front and center in all Riesling-based wines. It grows best in cool climates that can show off the minerals and the terroir, the sense of place that a vineyard gives to its grapes. Riesling may be my favorite white grape, but the second grape in this blend is no slouch either. Chenin Blanc is grown in the Loire Valley in France, where it makes some of the most sought after and spectacular white wines in the world. Everything from steely, dry, high alcohol, stern and foreboding wines, to soft, lush, rich dessert wines that go down like liquid gold. The grape itself features kind of a, a quince character combined with apples and a honeyed note that some people even describe as being like honeydew melons. It has a softness to its mouthfeel, almost a creaminess that comes through in the finish. Between these two grapes, what we're looking for is balance. But you only get that if they come from a great growing area. Our grapes come from here, in the lower end of the Yakima Valley, from Dufault Vineyards. It's part of Coventry Vale Winery. They've got a lovely south-facing slope and the Yakima River is about three miles south, so they've got a good run out for the heat of the day. That can be crucial. If the growing area is completely flat, the heat accumulated during the day takes a long time to disperse, and the grapes can get overripe and lose their fruitiness and acidity. The layout of this vineyard ensures you get good ripeness while retaining your acidity and crispness. Together, the Riesling and the Chenin Blanc form a powerhouse of stone fruit and apples. You get peaches, you get apricot, you get nectarine, green apples, and also that honey and honeydew melon character coming through in the finish. The acidity is gorgeously balanced by perfect creamy mouthfeel and just the right amount of rich sweetness. This wine will have about 12 grams per liter of residual sugar. That makes it a one on the standard sweetness scale. Yet the acidity helps offset that so you never feel like you're drinking a sweet wine, just one that's perfectly rich. It'll drink quite well young. That acidity and sweetness balance makes it taste thirst quenching and really gulpable, but it's going to develop for a much longer time than most other white wines would. That's Riesling's influence. At one to three years, it's probably going to come through its peak, and it'll start showing more of that honeyed note and give you more of that creamy, rich mouth feel. That is, if you can hang on to any that long. It's a brilliant food wine. Both acidity and sweetness allow it to work across a wide range of flavors. Grilled chicken, fruit and cheese, seafood, or even pork chops, they'd all be fine. However, we've got something special in mind for this. Our special recipe this year for the Washington Riesling Chenin Blanc is white beans on truffle toast. This dish is a puree of butter beans with pancetta, the Italian bacon, and shaved grana padano cheese on toast crusts. It's got an incredible depth of flavor. It's got this wonderful savory earthiness and the truffle oil on top just kind of reinforces all of that rich, deep, earthy flavors. The acidity of the Riesling cuts through the oiliness and the richness and the wonderful fruit and honeyed notes of the Chenin Blanc picks up all those wonderful crisp toasty notes as well. It's a brilliant combination as an hors d'oeuvre and appetizer.